G'day curd nerds. Today we're going to be making camembert and camembert is from the Normandy region of France. Now I have made a camembert video previously but I didn't show all the steps. So today you're going to see how it goes from the milk bottle all the way through to maturation and hopefully eating. This is a small batch. I'm only going to be using four litres of milk so we'll probably get three small camemberts out of it. Anyway, on with the cheese. Rightio, the ingredients are 4 litres of full cream milk, 8th of a teaspoon of mesophilic culture. You could use a aromatic mesophilic culture if you wanted a milder cheese. 16th of a teaspoon of penicillium candidum, uh, 132nd of a teaspoon of geotrichum candidum, 1 8th of a teaspoon of calcium chloride and 1 8th of a teaspoon of liquid rennet and you'll need a saturated brine solution of about 18%. So we're going to bring our milk temperature up to 29 degrees Celsius or 87 Fahrenheit and then we add in our mesophilic culture. I'm using a mad milli mesophilic here uh, very similar to the one I normally use which is MO30 by Sacco. So just getting all the bits out there So I'm not stirring it just yet, we're letting that rehydrate a little bit. Now we're going to be adding the Penicillium Candidum. This is causes the bloomy white rind on the cheese. So letting that rehydrate a little bit as well. And we're going to add in our geotrichum candidum. Now geotrichum candidum stops skin slip on camembert or white bloomy cheese. It also adds a, a kind of a mushroomy flavour. Very subtle um, but it's very nice. Now let that all rest for about three minutes before you stir it in. Just rehydrates the cultures and then when you do stir it in just stir it in very very gently. Just uh, it stops the cultures forming into lumps and not dissolving properly. So I stirred that for about two or three minutes and I'm going to add in the calcium chloride. So there's no ripening time for the cultures. So now the uh, calcium chloride is added in, just give that a good stir. And then we're going to add in the rennet. So that liquid rennet's been diluted in non-chlorinated water, just like the calcium chloride. And then we give that good, a good stir for about a minute. I wouldn't do it any more than a minute because that's when it starts to coagulate. So we're going to let that rest or set now for 90 minutes. That's an hour and a half. So an hour and a half later, we're going to cut the curd into two and a half uh, centimetre or one inch cubes. So that's rather large. And they have to be because you don't want small curd size because that would mean too much whey would expel and you won't get the moist camembert you're after. So I'm not using my curd cutter because that's uh, one and a half centimetre uh, cubes it makes. So I'm using a, a diagonal technique. So I've already done the, the vertical. So I'm using diagonal to get the horizontal cuts. And it works quite well this way. Now we're going to allow the curds to heal for five minutes. And then uh, once that five minutes has elapsed, we're not going to actually stir the curds. We're going to lift them. So this is very gentle. They're very gentle curds. So we're going to gently lift for five minutes until the edges kind of look a little bit rounded. So even though that doesn't look gentle, that's just sped up. But you can see there I'm being very gentle. So 
So the cube size is, is large. So you can see there, they, they haven't shrunk down too much. It's only been five minutes of lifting. Now I'm going to let that rest for five minutes. And then we're going to take it over to the sink area. The curds have settled a little bit. We're going to ladle out uh, the whey until you can just see the curds. Now, yes, I am tipping it down the sink. I've got more ricotta than I know what to do with. Anyway, so then you ladle the curds into your camembert hoops. Now, these are 10 centimetre in diameter, and they're about 10 centimetres tall. Now, I did think I was going to get away with using two, but I had to add a third one, and lucky I had sanitised four of these, but I um, only ended up using three. So you'll have a little bit more on the bottom, so just uh, allow, wait for some time and then just keep topping it up. So don't be tempted to add another one or your camemberts will be very flat indeed. Now it may take about an hour um, before you get all the curds into the, uh, the hoops or moulds. Now, some time has passed. I've actually turned this a little bit. Um, you need to flip the camembert now every two hours for the next six hours, so that's three times. I just find it's very easy to use a, a cheese board top and bottom and then just flip them over like that. Makes the whole process of turning quite easy. And you might have to tap them a little bit. Uh, just to make sure that they drop back down again properly. And I apologise for the bouncy camera. <laughs> I had it in the sink. So drain off your mats that you're using. I'm using just bamboo mats there. Now, once you've done that six hours of turning, just uh, let that rest overnight and you'll see they shrink considerably. However, we don't pull them out of the mould just yet, so I'm just showing you. They're actually quite spongy still, and they would spread. They're not firm enough. So we keep them in the hoops for 24 hours, and we flip them every six hours. So this is essential to make sure that your camemberts don't go flat or, or, um, or start to spread within the container, and they hold their shape. So at the end of the 24 hours, then we're going to transfer them into the brine. Um, I made a mistake here. I was going to put them straight in the cheese fridge and then I remembered hey, I didn't salt these. Um, so I put them in the box anyway. So they're very firm, which is what we want. They're still very moist, um, which is what we also need. But you can see they're probably about, about an inch and a half high and three fit into my maturation box there very well. So I'm just going to move that box up to the side and put the camembert in the brine there. You can salt them um, all over, but I find that uh, recently, since I started remaking camembert again, that brine works a lot better. So I pop the three in there, so an hour each, so that's uh, three hours in total, and just turn them every hour just to make sure they're totally submersed in the brine and they're, uh, they're soaking enough salt. So after that three hours has elapsed, I'm going to take the little bears, as I've uh, fondly called them. I'm going to put them into the maturation box proper. And we're going to uh, ripen those for 14 days at 10 degrees Celsius or 50 Fahrenheit. So they'll go into the cheese cave. Make sure you've got a good seal. They do start to let off a fair bit of ammonia in those first 14 days and the fridge will smell a bit. So here's the camembert at one week old. You can see they've got a bloom on them already, which is great. Now, make sure you do turn daily. Now, I skipped a day there and you can see that they started to make an impression 
into the plastic mat there that I'm using. So it's uh, don't skip any days. Make sure that you do turn them daily. And they do have a bloom on top and bottom and starting to on the sides uh, at the one week mark. Little fuzzy pillows, very nice. Anyway, you couldn't eat them at this stage. They just taste like a fresh cheese, basically. So we're gonna pop the lid back on, pop them back in the cheese cave at 10 degrees Celsius um, for another week. Now, we're gonna use a cheese wrap. This is a micro perforated cheese wrap, and it has a shiny side and it has a dull side. You put your camembert onto the dull side. Uh, this has an absorbent layer that actually helps absorb any more moisture and uh, keeps the bloomy white rind of your cheeses. So this is the camembert at two weeks. They look perfect, look good enough to eat, but they're not ready yet. They do, you can feel on the edges, there's a little bit of moisture, a little bit runniness, um, which is okay at this stage, but they are fully covered in a white bloom. So they're now ready to wrap in the cheese wrap. And this prevents the white bloom from um, getting out of control, basically. So I'm going to use some stickers there just to stick the paper down. And they're going to double as labels in a second. You'll see that in a minute. Now, if a man had have had his act together, <laughs> he would have unstuck all the labels off the sheet first instead of mucking around. But anyway. So these had no other moulds on them, which was fantastic. So they weren't contaminated by anything else. It was just a pure white mould. Nothing wrong with that at all. Delicious. So then we're going to label them and we're going to ripen them for another week or two, depending on how runny you want the centre to be. Um, camembert ripens from the outside in um, so you'll see that the edges become runny first. So I'm just labelling those uh, when I'm going to open them. So I'm going to open one at a week after this and then the other two at four weeks old. So we pop those back into the cheese cave again uh, at the 10 degrees Celsius for another week. Now at this stage we can turn them every, uh, twice a week, it's no big deal. Right, so here is the test to see if it's okay. So the paper comes off alright, this is at three weeks old. You can see some of the bloom has kind of been absorbed into the, the paper. But it does look alright, it looks nice, it's well developed. So it's firm top and bottom, but a little bit, um, I wouldn't say squishy, but it's uh, it feels different on the sides. So we'll cut in, you can see that the paste hasn't oozed out, and that's fine. So let me pull a bit out. And you can see there that the edges, and the skin start to slip off there a little bit, edges are very creamy, and the centre is still quite firm. So I would say this is not entirely ripe. Um, we're going to leave the other two for another two weeks, see how it goes, and uh, I'll do another video. When I bit into it, uh, it was it was quite strong, so I think next time I'm going to use an aromatic mesophilic culture um, to bring some of that level of acidity down. But it does taste delicious, the paste is amazing, great flavour. Give it a try. Now you can pick up a camembert kit over at littlegreenworkshops.com.au you can also don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you can see other great videos like this Lester and this Farmhouse Cheddar. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.